Hi folks, I'm Wayne with Lone Wolf Hop Rods. It wasn't that long ago that hopped up point triggered ignition systems were the standard for performance. A dual point setup was, was really, it was the holy grail. And, and so was a recurve that suited the vehicle. You'd swap in quality points, a good condenser, and along with an aftermarket cap and rotor. Uh, the next step was to baseline the point gap with a feeler gauge. In theory, if the point gap is correct, the dwell should also be correct, but a dwell meter such as this allowed you to get it right on the money. The bottom line here is a point-triggered Delco distributor it was and still is easily stable to 7,000 RPM or more when properly set up. They don't have electronic modules that fail. They're incredibly easy to work on. Anyone could and still can modify one at home with basic tools. So far, so good. But today, dwell meters, along with points, seem to be pretty much obsolete. When they were in the good old days, they were found front row center in the auto parts store, but they no longer take up any amount of retail space. But components are really still available from several different companies. Let's back up for a minute, though. Way back when in the 70s, it was also no huge secret among racers that engines simply ran a whole bunch better when the spark was fired by an electronic ignition system. Those long duration, big cam, high overlap engines just idled better and always seemed to be easier to tune with a good electronic setup. As a side benefit, combinations like the big block Chevy, which were well-known spark plug killers, actually became easier on parts. Fast forward to the present. It's still possible to work with simple solutions or systems of yesteryear, but at the same time, to mix in wonders of modern electronics. Allow me to explain. With the right mix of parts, a vintage Delco point-triggered ignition system, give a distributor, can be rebuilt and, and reworked to act as a trigger device for a modern high-performance ignition system such as an MSD7AL2. You don't need a fragile aftermarket electronic distributor. The point setup provides a dirt simple device to tell the analog MSD when to fire. And at the same time, it provides a high powered multiple spark along with a high quality, easy to adjust rev control. Best of all, the, this mix of parts is readily available from several sources. If you like simple and easy to work on hardware as much as I do, it's a great plan. In the accompanying slideshow, I'll show you how it all goes together using a vintage Delco distributor as the basis. And keep in mind the fundamentals of working on a Delco point trigger distributor is pretty much the same if you have a Ford or a Mopar. Check it out. This is the starting point, a stock Delco single point distributor. This particular example is a pretty good score. It came out of an uber low mileage 307. Because of the miles, the shaft bushings are in great shape, but the curve is pathetically slow. First things first, remove the cap and rotor. They're easy. You'll be met with this. Check the end clearance before going any further. To accomplish this, simply use a feeler gauge to determine go, no go clearance between the oil slinger and the gear. This one was huge at 65 thousandths of an inch. I'll show you how to adjust it later. Next, lock, knock out the roll pin on the distributor gear. The second photo shows the gear, oil slinger, and stock shim pack. Note the orientation. The factory Adelco distributor gear has a dimple in it that aligns with the pointer of the rotor. Some aftermarket replacement distributor gears do not have a dimple. However, the gear can be installed 180 degrees off in order to fine tune the distributor housing position on the engine. For example, if you cannot set the initial timing without the vacuum advanced canister hitting an OEM spark plug wire bracket or an intake manifold runner, Simply remove and reinstall the distributor drive gear 180 degrees and reinstall the distributor. Flipping the drive gear will provide approximately 14 degrees of distributor body movement in relation to the surroundings. Installing the gear with the dimple aligned with the rotor uh, pointer is important in Corvettes with ignition shielding since it has to be a fit in a predetermined opening. Some aftermarket camshafts either ignore the index and layout or they don't take any account the importance in an early Corvette application with distributor shielding. The bottom line here is it really doesn't have an effect upon timing. It affects the location of the distributor body and the vacuum advance canister in relation to the intake manifold or in the case of a Corvette the ignition shielding. With the gear removed you can remove the shaft. With the shaft out this is what you're met with. 
Remove the point set along with the condenser. A simple flat blade screwdriver is all you'll need. This is where we're at. The point set and the condenser are out, but the vacuum canister is still in place. With the shaft out, remove the stock black vinyl plastic advanced limiter bushing. It's found under the advanced weight plate on the shaft as shown here. Next up, remove the stock weights and springs. A small needle nose pliers works well for spring removal. The vacuum advanced canister is next to come out. There are two flat blade screws holding it in place. One is visible at the top, the other isn't visible. To access them, you'll have to rotate the point plate. A vacuum pump works great. More on this later. Here's the distri uh, strip distributor. Save the two screws from the vacuum advanced canister. You'll need them later. Remember that plastic advanced stop I removed earlier? Replace it with a brass piece from Mr. Gasket or Moroso, included in their advanced curve kits. Don't hammer the bushing on. Use an old socket as a spacer and a bench vise and gently press it into place. What this larger than stock bushing does is to limit the amount of mechanical advance. With this bushing, mechanical advance will be all done by 2000 to 2800 RPM. The range is dependent upon the distributor. The idea here is to take away mechanical advance and replace it with initial advance. More initial advance is what's, what makes an engine quick on the throttle. On the top side, the advance mechanism was lightly lubed. A dab of lithium grease under the weights is perfect and the weights are reinstalled. And here we're using uh, advanced curve kit weights from Moroso or Mr. Gasket, your choice. Three different uh, uh, pairs of springs are included with the Mr. Gasket and Moroso kits. For my application, I selected the lightest weight springs from the advanced curve kit. Don't be afraid to mix and match springs to get the curve right. Every engine and every car will be different. As a result, it's impossible to give you the exact numbers. Typically, cars with, with automatics like a quicker, shorter curve when compared to stick shift combinations. Compression ratio, cylinder head material, combustion chamber design, quench, ambient temperature, your, your elevation above sea level, and the quality of the gasoline will definitely have an impact upon how much or how little advance your engine will tolerate. You don't need a distributor machine to set up the curve. You can see the changes springs provide by using your timing light along with the degree dampener or balancer. And yes, timing tape on the balancer will work just as well. The next step is the installation of an adjustable vacuum advance canister. This one is, a, is an Excel job. It allows you to configure the rate at which the vacuum advance comes in. Why use a vacuum advance on a high performance car? Well, it's simple. A vacuum advance operates under high manifold vacuum. It doesn't work when you get on the throttle, so it's not adding advance. With the vacuum advance connected to manifold vacuum, where it should be connected in a performance car, ported vacuum was invented for use in smog applications and has, has absolutely no place in high performance. The stock vacuum advance system adds approximately 15 degrees to the initial timing. Keep in mind the centrifugal advance isn't added, adding anything at idle. The same applies when you're cruising down the road in high gear, except the vacuum advance adds timing to both the initial and the centrifugal. Here you might end up with 50 degrees or so uh, total, total advance timing. While cruising at a constant speed, the engine will most likely be lean. The extra advance provided by the vacuum advance system helps to burn the lean mixture. There's, there's more to it though. Let's say you're accelerating. Here, the air-fuel mixture is enriched by the accelerator pump as well as the power valve in, in a, in a Holly carburetor. The rich mixture burns quicker and because of this, it doesn't require additional spark advance. When you hit the throttle, the manifold vacuum drops and the vacuum advance goes to zero. The distributor reverts to the mechanical advance timing along with the initial advance timing only. What this really does is to artificially retard the timing. Back off the throttle and the carburetor leans out and the vacuum advance system comes back into play, effectively adding timing to light the lean fuel, air fuel mixture. It's a sound system and works incredibly well. As you can see, the, the vacuum advance system effectively responds to engine load. It provides the correct degree of spark, of spark advance to, to effectively deal with both rich and lean carburetor mixtures. Sure, it's no computer-controlled spark system, but it does a really, really good job of optimizing throttle response, fuel economy, and improving cooling at idle. It also has no effect, not a zero, nothing on performance when the throttle is wide open. Keep that in mind. More on configuring the adjustable advance system later. Next up, installing the vacuum advance can is something challenging because sometimes challenging because you, you can't always gain full access to the screws. Easy, here's an easy solution. Install a vacuum pump on the canister nipple. With the vacuum pump installed and drawing a vacuum, the actuator on the canister will move and you'll be able to install a pair of screws. The next thing to install is the trigger system, the point 
points. This is a typical point condenser setup for a Delco single point distributor. Excel manufactures this high performance package. For your information, Excel offers heavy duty or race point sets too. They have a much stronger spring, but we don't really need them here. We're using a, a point trigger distrib a distributor to trigger the spark for an MSD ignition box or, or another ignition box, you don't need the condenser. In addition, if you're working on a dual point distributor, you should unhook the trailing set of points. With the dual point, the second set of points effectively adds spark dwell time. The electronic ignition box, the MSD7 in this case, looks after spark dwell time. The purpose of the point set in the distributor and the way it is ultimately wired is simply to tell the MSD box when it's time to fire. Since the point set is now acting as a simple switch, actually acting as a, as a reference signal, with very little current passing through it, it will last a very, very long time. Mechanical wear will be nominal as well. In this next photo, the point set's installed. Note the lube on the rubbing block wick. The back side of the point arm where it contacts the rubbing block is also lubricated. Typically, point sets include a little, a little container of lube. The, the shaft complete, uh, complete, a shaft complete with the advanced mechanism is installed next. It simply slides into place within the distributor body. Downstairs, it's time to reinstall the distributor gear, oil slinger, and the shim pack. If you recall, our, our distributor originally had an end clearance of 65 thousandths of an inch. GM service publications call for an end clearance figure of, of two thousandths to six thousandths of an inch. When you look back at the original end clearance dimensions by low mileage distributor head, you can see there's a huge difference. To get to where we need it to be, I simply juggled shim source from Moroso. Here the distributor is clamped in a vise in between two blocks of wood. The roll pin is simply driven in by way of a hammer and a punch. Remember the orientation we mentioned earlier. Upstairs, it's time to set the point gap. While dwell is the method used to set up a distributor for point use only, the MSD ignition box determines dwell. As a result, there's only a need to set the gap. For new points, it should be set at 18 thousandths of an inch. The distributor cap and the rotor are installed next. I use Excel components here and for good reason. Excel rotors have a longer rotor tip. This means the spark doesn't have to travel as far inside the distributor to the distributor cap post. <clears throat> Additionally, the arc ribs found on the Excel rotor are larger than those found on many replacement stock rotors. The Excel distributor cap is manufactured from Alkid. The posts have corrosion resistant brass inserts and the rotor spring is steel. All of this contributes to a cap that can handle high voltage spark surges and high temperatures. In this photo, the rotor is installed in the distributor. Stock screws are used to, to nail it down. With Excel's adjustable vacuum advance system, we simply start by backing the advance off by turning the supplied Allen wrench counterclockwise. Excel suggests you adjust the vacuum advance mechanisms in two turn increments and the car experiences, until the car experiences a surge or a ping at cruise speeds. Uh, typically, and dependent upon the amount of vacuum advance produced by the engine, one turn from counterclockwise produces approximately two degrees of advance, while six turns from counterclockwise provides approximately 18 degrees of advance. For my own purposes, I start with only two degrees of vacuum advance and work up from there. Here's the finished custom distributor. As you can see, building a custom distributor to fire an MSD ignition system isn't that difficult. This is the correct wiring diagram from MSD, illustrating how to wire a, a 7AL2 ignition system triggered by a distributor with points. As you can see, it's not that difficult. So how much advance do you need? Well, once again, it's all dependent upon the engine and the car combination. When the initial timing and the centrifugal advance are added, you can come up with total timing. As an example, if your engine has 12 degrees of initial, dialed into the distributor by way of the timing marks on the harmonic balancer. When it has another 25 degrees of timing in the centrifugal, then the total timing is 37 degrees. Some people also factor the vacuum advance into this figure as well. Assuming that the vacuum advance mechanism adds another 12 degrees, we have 49 degrees total in the system. And that's it.